This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, a beauty guide for women with cancer. Let's face it. Listen, you're still living. You want to look good. You want to have a sense of control and kind of feel like yourself. A guide for looking pretty when you're pretty sick. When Radio Health Journal returns. Medicare open enrollment is underway and millions of older Americans are evaluating their options to ensure their health plan meets their retirement lifestyle. Silver Sneakers, the nation's leading community fitness program designed specifically for older Americans, is helping people stay active and do more of what they love by improving their physical and mental health through fitness, fun, and friends. No matter your goals, from running a marathon for the first time to keeping up with your grandchildren, Silver Sneakers can help you live your best life. In fact, 91% of members say Silver Sneakers has improved their quality of life. Offered as a free benefit through leading Medicare plans, Silver Sneakers members have free access to all the amenities of a basic membership at more than 13,000 fitness and wellness facilities nationwide, as well as specialized group exercise classes led by certified instructors. Medicare open enrollment ends December 7th. Check your Medicare plan to see if you have the Silver Sneakers benefit. Learn more and see if you're eligible at silversneakers.com. Cancer is a devastating diagnosis. All kinds of thoughts about life and death and the future could race through people's minds. But oncologists report that the number one question women ask when they receive a cancer diagnosis is not, am I going to die? But is my hair going to fall out? That points to such a concern for women that I'm facing this horrible disease, but like, am I going to lose my identity? That's Caitlin Kiernan, former fashion columnist and beauty director and author of the new book, Pretty Sick, a Beauty Guide for Women with Cancer. She says she asked the same question, too, when she learned she had breast cancer. I was told I was going to lose my hair, but not only was I going to lose my hair, I was going to lose my eyebrows, my eyelashes, my nails. A lot of people don't realize that with Taxol-type chemo protocols, you can lose your nails or your nails can lift. And I'm like, how am I going to maintain my job as a beauty director and go out to events and beauty and meet with beauty people and experts and interview people when I look like I'm you know, when I have like one foot in the grave. My career and my health were on a collision course, and I'm like, how am I going to rectify this? As a magazine beauty director before she had cancer, Kiernan says she never provided beauty tips for cancer patients in her column because it just wasn't a sexy topic. I do feel like there was a lack of information for women on the aesthetic side in cancer treatment. And I do feel like oftentimes, and this is what I experienced when I was going through treatment, when I would ask about my breast reconstruction or ask about my hair or my nails and how to keep those things looking good during treatment, because let's face it, listen, you're still living. You want to look good. You want to have a sense of control and kind of feel like yourself. I do feel like I got a little attitude from people sometimes. I think there was judgment that I should be focused on my health and not on what my nails look like, or if my hair was going to grow back in a certain amount of time, or if my reconstruction was going to resemble real breasts. And to me, I feel like the two are not mutually exclusive. You can care for your health, but you can also care for your looks and you should, because that's what helps you power through the day. At least it did for me. Kiernan says concerns about looks aren't trivial or vain. Often those worries are surprisingly practical. Some women want to look as normal as possible so they don't frighten their children with a bald head or green-looking skin. Everybody has their own reason. You may be a woman that's a high-powered executive, and you have to walk into a boardroom and talk to your board of directors and be able to have confidence. And one doctor that's in the book is actually a breast cancer survivor, Dr. Heidi Waldorf. She's a leading dermatologist in the U.S. She was also a breast cancer survivor. She's like, I had to look good because I didn't want my patients to be like, are you okay to work on me? Like, you know, there's a lot of reasons why women going through cancer treatment want to maintain their physical appearance. And it's not just vanity. And I thought it was time to sort of shatter that taboo. So when Kiernan received her cancer diagnosis, she turned to her contacts in the beauty industry to get the information she needed. 
For example, Ted Gibson, an A-list celebrity hairstylist who has worked on people like Angelina Jolie and Deborah Messing. When I was getting ready and prepared to start my chemo protocol, I called him and I was like, all right, here's the deal. Like, what do I do? And he was like, you need a game plan. First of all, you need to go wig shopping because the wig specialist is going to need to see what your hair looks like, the texture of it, the color of it, so that we can either get you a wig or have a wig made that looks like your hair. Secondly, you need to cut your hair because within 14 days of starting chemo, your hair starts to fall out and it falls out fast and furious. It comes out, starts coming out in clumps. It's on your pillow. It's on your clothes. And it really is a very um, disconcerting situation. Next, Kiernan spoke to dermatologist Dr. Heidi Waldorf, also a breast cancer survivor. She gave me amazing tips, just not only about skin care and taking care of yourself, but she also had really awesome tips about how she tweaked her makeup, you know, after her eyelashes and her eyebrows fell off. Like one of the tips that she told me was that she went out and bought these really cool sunglasses and eyeglasses and had the optician put in little pads on the nose. So it raised her eyeglasses up a little bit. So it covered where her eyebrow was. So most people didn't even know she didn't have eyebrows during that time. And she was like, you know, when I went in to see patients, it just made me look like I had more authority, that I was kind of like more geek chic. And I thought, wow, that's just so genius. Like, who would have thought about that? Kiernan says the experts in her book talk about things that aren't mentioned in the oncologist's office, including sex. 90% of women that go through chemotherapy treatment and radiation will experience some form of sexual dysfunction after cancer treatment. Not one of my oncologists said to me, you should be meeting with your gynecologist. You should be finding out about this. This is what's coming down. Nobody. And I was at the best institutions under the best doctors. So if I'm not being told, what's the woman in Alabama or Kentucky or in more remote areas than I was in, in New York City, what information is she getting? Like, to me, why isn't anybody talking about this? This is important information. You know, this is life altering. It really has a major effect on your quality of life. And it doesn't just affect us, it affects our partners. Kiernan understands that getting glammed up when you're undergoing chemo isn't for everyone. Even under the best of circumstances, it's a hard road. When you're dealing with things like breast cancer or cancers that you are required to have a chemotherapy, that you lose your hair, there is so much of basic cancer treatment that makes you lose your femininity step by step by step. Surgery cuts your breasts, you know, you have your breasts cut into or removed. You lose your hair. Your skin starts to break out in acne. A lot of people don't even know that, that like cystic acne becomes a thing during chemotherapy. And you want to feel like a woman. You're losing such essential things that the little things really end up making such a huge difference in your self-esteem, how you're feeling about yourself, keeping a positive attitude. The little things get you through the long long game, in my opinion. Listen, I'm not telling you to put on eyeliner. I'm telling you, if you're going to do it, here's the best way to do it. Or if you want to find a wig and you want to wear a wig every day, then here's what you should look for. But by no means should you feel like you have to do it. It's too much. It's too much. With the whimsical illustrations and girlfriend feel of the book, Kiernan hopes she can help women who are cancer patients forget for a moment the horror of the situation. You can learn more about Caitlin Kiernan and her book, Pretty Sick, by visiting our website at radiohealthjournal.net. Our writer-producer this week is Polly Hansen. Our production director is Sean Waldron. I'm Nancy Benson. Radio Health Journal returns with medical notes in just a moment. Each year, thousands of adults in the United States get sick, are hospitalized, and some even die from diseases that could be prevented by vaccines. People with heart disease or those who have suffered strokes are at high risk for serious problems as a result of these illnesses, like the flu or pneumonia. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says if you have heart disease or had a stroke, it's especially important to talk with your doctor about getting your vaccinations up to date. Heart disease makes it harder for you to fight off certain diseases. In fact, some vaccine-preventable diseases, like the flu, can increase the risk of another heart attack. Vaccines are one of the safest and more effective ways to protect your health, and the influenza and pneumococcal vaccines are especially important to people with heart disease or stroke. So don't wait. Vaccinate. 
Talk to your doctor to get your vaccinations up to date. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash vaccines slash heart. That's cdc.gov slash vaccines slash heart. Medical notes this week. Researchers are finding more and more effects of the lead contamination in Flint, Michigan's water supply. A study from the University of Kansas analyzed birth records and found that fertility rates dropped by 12%, while contamination was going on, and the fetal death rate rose by 58%. Researchers also found a 5% drop in average birth weight of babies born in Flint compared with other Michigan cities, and a decline in overall health of babies at birth. Air pollution is bad for people too. A new study in the Journal of the American Society of Nephrology finds that air pollution increases the risk of chronic kidney disease and even contributes to kidney failure. Researchers say nearly 45,000 new cases of kidney disease and 2,500 new cases of kidney failure are triggered by smog levels that exceed safe standards. However, they say even lower levels of air pollution damage kidneys over time. The study finds that Southern California and large regions in the Midwest and Northeast carry the highest kidney risk. And finally, a 20-year-long study finds that in the years following menopause, most women get considerably happier. The study in the journal Maturitas shows that negative mood and depression decrease significantly as women age past 65. Researchers say it's because women have more me time with fewer full-time work and family responsibilities. And that's Medical Notes this week. Most people have heard of Medicare Parts A and B and the prescription drug benefits in Part D, but a survey shows surprisingly few beneficiaries know of an important option that could combine them in one Medicare plan what's known as Medicare Part C. A survey for the Better Medicare Alliance shows that 65% of beneficiaries on original Medicare are unfamiliar with Medicare Advantage plans. Notably, only 29% of them say Medicare Advantage was presented as a clear option while they researched plans. Nancy Kokoza, head of Aetna Medicare, explains. Medicare beneficiaries want plan options. Medicare Advantage plans are an alternative to original Medicare that cover all of Parts A and B, and can include Part D and extra benefits like vision, dental, or a fitness membership. Medicare Advantage can also help control your health care costs by limiting out-of-pocket costs. Learn more at Medicare101.com slash learn. That's Medicare101.com slash learn. Thank you for listening to Radio Health Journal, a production of MediaTracks Communications. If you enjoyed this week's show, please leave a review on iTunes or share it with a friend. You can find more Radio Health Journal stories about health, science, and technology on iTunes, Stitcher, and at RadioHealthJournal.net.